Okay. Welcome to the April 15th uh, Environmental Review Board meeting. Uh, present is David Horowitz. Of course, Ivan Alter. Uh, I guess we have minutes to go through first. Uh, yes. First two items on the agenda. Okay. From those two meetings. So I have a two questions. Okay. Uh, uh, um, the twenty sixth okay. minutes. Yes. On um, page four. That it's, it, says, it's, it says on the last tree postage stamp huh. on Red Oak Lane. Oh, it should say a postage stamp lot. I think that was where you were referring to. Oh, it's on page four? Yeah. Underneath the tree appeal? Uh, yeah, exactly. On the tree removal permit? Yep. <clears throat> on the last tree, the last tree, uh, a button quote. Okay. Uh, on the March eighteenth minutes. Okay. The second paragraph. The fourth line from the bottom. Which page? I'm sorry. Second page. Okay. So uh, second paragraph. Okay. The line says continued, stating that to reduce it would mean eliminating it in its entirety. I, I think the discussion was that one car bag, not the entire garage. She stated continuing that to reduce it would mean eliminating it in its entirety. The additional bay. Oh, right. So, okay. Because you're saying that to reduce it would maybe translate to one part eliminating it. Eliminating, eliminating one bag. Right. Okay. I could rephrase that. To eliminating. One bay in its entirety. Okay. One garage bay. All for that. Okay. That's it. I'll make those corrections. Motion to accept the to accept the February twenty sixth minutes. This modification. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Yeah. Motion to accept the March 18th minutes. Noted. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Hey, Dennis. Okay. Let's start from the next one. So uh, I'll just turn it over to you, Amy, since this is a uh, a revision um, of a continuing application. Sure, yeah. Um, it's nice to see you guys all in person. We wanted um, to come today um, just because we've been talking about this project since December. And um, we started back in December um, and we've been on this kind of journey where we were trying to simplify and um, reduce and to use your language and avoid more. Um, New impervious area, and we have since December continued to reduce our project. And then we got some new information, and so we're kind of scrambling to document that information, getting an updated survey, getting a report from the soil engineer, and now we have it back on our survey. And what we have done is we listened to you guys last time, we gave your last words to me, and look for more avoidance. Um, and I, <laughs> yes. So, uh, yes, and um, it's always a bit of, you know, architecture is one of those things where you have, you have to kind of weigh the benefits and explain to clients, um, you know, what we can lose 
and the importance of losing that from an environmental perspective. So our clients are here tonight. They're very, very much care about this property. They want to be good stewards of the property. Um, and so one of the areas that Carrie was most excited about, we have eliminated entirely from our project, which is the patio and the stone patio. Um, that whole area, we uh, sent you guys revisions from the architectural set and then also from the site plan. Um, just took that off entirely. And what that <laughs> did was it reduced our total room impervious area by, if I think correctly, but I think it's like 25, 27% total. Um, it was a pretty big um, chunk. And so by doing that, we actually um, have brought our area of new impervious down below 1,000 square feet. Um, so just to reiterate what we've been talking about with this project is it really is about a subtle modification to this existing house. We're not proposing these big additions and in total all of that together is less than a thousand square feet now. Uh, when we started, I think we were at like 2000 and then the last time we are at um, around 1300. It is to note that we are keeping the wetlands area at the higher um, amount. Um, not only because we thought it looks nice the way that um, Dennis had suggested planting it, but also we felt that um, why not, why not we could keep that wetlands area larger. Um, and then because of that, we, did, um, we talked to Dennis and he said, even though that we're under a thousand, we're still going to want to look at, um, we don't need stormwater management. It, it solves a lot of problems for us in many ways. Um, but because we do need drainage, and we he, he point out that you guys will want to look at that. So Michael has come up with that, what I think is a very smart solution, very simple, um, and he can explain. I'm not in a chance to explain a little bit more about it. But basically, they're in these filtration tanks. Is that yeah, well, they're, oh. they're, they're not. In Before you do that, yeah. just one question. Yeah. Dennis, are we square now on the flag areas? And the I I looked at the survey that that's been. Updated so coming coming from both sides, it appears. I guess yeah, the whole so house property yeah. could technically be within the yeah. wet, be the wetland right. or wetlands. But I, I yeah. saw that. My question was, yeah. Are you in agreement with what? Yes, was uh, what was discussed was not re investigated with respect to the pond spoils and is that is that not <clears throat> hydric, whatever they, they all the report really spoke about, which was fine, was capturing the extra area and. It's all good on the on the survey and in the report. Okay. Thank Sorry. you. Yeah, Jim couldn't be with us tonight, but he said if you have any questions, then he can follow up with us. So um so yeah, Michael, why don't you speak a little bit about yeah, the, all, 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 okay. yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> uh all, all we did is we put in what we call pre-treatment tanks. They're essentially septic tanks, but without dividers in and stuff like that. You you hey, I have an input in and out. They're the same. One's a little lower, the yeah, other's a little bit lower, but it, the water comes in and it just, what happens is the tank ends up being full and it just drops out rocks and whatnot and dirt and anything else that might come up on the roof. You'd be amazed how many things come off the roof. And it goes in there and it goes in and it drops it off. It's a way of cleaning the water up a little without going into ponds and stuff like that. The amount of water, I haven't redone, it would be less. But what I did over here before and after when it comes to the impervious and the amount of water that goes in the pond is, you can't even tell. It's like such a little amount in a hundred year storm. Because we're not doing that much to the house right now, so at all. You know, when it comes to, we're just beautifying the house, making it a little fast, right? But it's going to be even nicer. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we had three tanks, right? Um, yeah. Capturing that area from the garage. And then, um, and then actually, that, well, this one comes back over this way and it captures one half of the roof in the back because the roof is like this. So you're taking the water off the back. You don't want to take too much water off, but it doesn't matter now. I'm not, I'm not creating a pond or a rain garden or anything. I'm just putting it into the tank so it goes through the tank. This, right now, this property has a whole bunch of pipes that come down. I don't even know what they are, but they do all come down and come down and, and discharge, of course, into the pond. We're just doing one one step farther. We're collecting any dirt and taking care of that. And so even though we're not doing the ponds there or the green gardens anymore, we are still cleaning it up for as much as we can. These are just tanks that are in the ground. Mm -hmm. You don't see them. You don't it's just like a septic tank. It's just you don't see it. the difference is in a septic tank they have a dividing wall and the outlets are set a certain way to keep 
you you have your your upper layer, which is like the stuff that floats, and you have a lower layer in the septic tank, and you don't want that going down into the fields. In this case, we don't worry about it, and we're not going anywhere near the septic that's over here. And we're not changing the house enough. We're not adding bedrooms or anything, so there's no reason to even think about it. You know, they could. You know, obviously, it's a difficult site. So in this case, that just takes care of it. Yeah. Yeah, the goal of the project is really to modify the house architecturally from an aesthetic point of view and get it just a little tiny bit more space. You know, just just enough. Um, that so it's just my family. You know, we have two girls that are going to be teenagers <laughs> before close to when we and get finishes from. Right. Um, <laughs> so it's really yeah, yeah, they wanna improve the property, you know, make an investment in their home, invest in their own top club. They've been here for how many years? Ten years. Ten years. Yeah. yeah. So that's the goal. Good. That's <laughs> great. Thanks. Dennis, are you done with the calculation now on the so, impacted area? Sure. So um as I'm not the engineer and I'm looking at this the straight math and the mitigation mm -hmm. I, I, and, and your treatment, I have no issue with that. But I just wanted to share um, with the board and with the applicants that you know I had a discussion with Bob and I said, what is what is your reaction to 996 square feet, which is just four square feet below the threshold by which, Chapter 108A now would come back into play, and you would have to obviously institute a whole different sort of approach to the stormwater. And, you know, to try to illustrate the differences that we're talking about, if you look down on the floor, it's, 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 a, it's about one of those carpet tiles, like one of the squares that you see. So, you know, it, 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 it's obviously a tight margin for error. So, Bob's messaging to me was well obviously you know when when the project is completed there's going to be an as-built survey required there's going to be uh, an updated coverage calculation both of those are going to have to be prepared by a surveyor a licensed surveyor and again yeah i don't think he's reviewed this yet but he is going to push for 950 square feet to uh give you a to give him, to give the town, give yourselves a bigger fudge factor, because once it's built and and you're over, then you know it becomes harder. Because obviously it's built, you understand, but you know the, the C of O, you'd have to possibly return to this board to see, you know, okay, so now where where is the additional disturbance going? So that's that's obviously now myself is. The environmental coordinator, but that was information I just want to share with the board because that right, that's not going to happen at our level. That's going to happen that's going to be messaging that gets in mm -hmm. right, and I would imagine that hypothetically, if it takes that turn, then going from nine hundred and ninety six to nine fifty or nine sixty or whatever, I don't see a justification for having to return here because that's a yeah. is it a change? Yes, but obviously not of yeah. consequence or something. It would be a reduction, right? right. No, we'll continue. I mean, we'll continue those conversations with uh, uh, the engineering, and we'll continue looking for whatever areas we can scrape away. I mean, I think that um, we did have, you know, the survey is accurate that we have. Um, we did survey all of the impervious area, and at the end, obviously, we also provide as built um, and whatever else is required, um, and. It's, it's a little tough because not a lot of square footage, and it's, it's, I keep saying it's a skinny cow already mm -hmm. to myself. But um, certainly, certainly, you know, I think you will have those discussions if you are able to. Does the house calculation include the uh, garage addition? Yes, the, the it all includes the garage addition. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it includes everything. How do you know what they? You know, we really try to be as precise as possible. Mm -hmm. So Dennis, is there anything else that you would want to see on the planting plan? Any of that? 
No, I mean, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was comfortable with the, with the mitigation plan. It was just obviously the way the, uh, this, you know, hydrologic dynamic here evolved. Uh, it was just, uh, just wanted to capture everything, which obviously the survey has done, you know, because uh, historically through no fault, you know, all that was ever focused on was the, was this uh, delineation line as, you know, and, and that includes my predecessor and that includes a prior project. And it just so happens that depending on the time of the year and the season, and, you know, obviously uh, we just captured something else. So I just wanted to make sure that that was um, included. That was for documentation purposes. <coughs> Any other comments, questions? And for me. So what's the next step, Dennis, then for so I mean if you guys are comfortable with it and you want to vote as to you know this this could be approved, um that's up to you. I wouldn't, uh, I typically don't, but especially in this case, I wouldn't necessarily quote unquote draft uh, a wetlands permit because obviously I would want to see if any amendments were to happen as a result of conversations with the town engineer. And that's also a benefit to the applicant because there's no reason for me to draft a permit that has a year expiration from the time I drafted it because obviously if nothing is happening during downtime, that's just lost time. Um, so. Uh, but once you have the approval, the fact, yeah, assuming that the board does approve it, the fact that I don't draft it this week, next week, whatever, that the clock doesn't start ticking and that doesn't expire. If that makes sense. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Just take a motion then. I move that we approve the, the uh, application. Okay. Any, any final comments from town engineer? Of material difference to what we've seen. All in favor? Ah, great. Thank you very much. I'm sure you're going to be missing us after all these months. We'll find a reason. You can come back. Hopefully, not a different Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you very much. Very much appreciated. Take care. So Dennis, we'll just follow up with um, or Michael will follow up with, um, with the next step, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, have you have you received or was a review letter generated from engineering yet from Bob no, no, or no. Miguel? Okay. No, no, no. Okay. So you touched on briefly. Okay. So 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 that that that's the next hurdle. Yeah. As you know. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'll deal with that. No Thanks, time. Ryan. Okay, bye bye. Thank you so bye, much. Thank Good. you. Good luck. I think that's all. Uh, I don't know if I have anything on the horizon. As I said, this was the only uh, application on the agenda this evening. That's great. Fantastic. So, well, in this case, the yes. motion to dismiss. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Is that close? Yeah, very, very. Yeah.